with faith in Jesus Christ. We receive the body of our sister Marilyn for burial. Our sister was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father to give of life that he will raise her to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Marilyn. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn, Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth, until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before, through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the light. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms.
hands for purity. Almighty God, For you today, your servant Marilyn, and we pray that having opened to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God forever and ever. The Old Testament reading is taken from the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 and verse 9. But the souls of the just are in God's hand. No torment will touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to be dead. Their departure was reckoned as defeat, and their going from us as disaster. But they are at peace. For though in the sight of men they may suffer punishment, they have a sure hope of immortality, and after little chastisement, they will receive great blessings, because God has tested them and found them worthy to be his. Those who have put their trust in him will understand that he is true, and the faithful will attend upon him in love. They are his chosen, and grace and mercy will be theirs. The word of the Lord.
the second reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning at verse 16 through the end, and continuing with chapter 5 through verse 9. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away. Our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what we can see, but what we cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but we cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. If indeed, when we have taken it off, we will not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan under our burden, because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. The word of the Lord.
be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew, the fifth chapter, beginning at the first verse. Glory to Christ our Savior. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they you will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who are before you. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Most of you who are familiar with the Lightborn family would know that Mel was one of nine children. And cannily, it's about 23 years, almost to the month, almost to the day, that one of our siblings left us. Two months ago, we decided that we should meet the siblings only, not with our spouses, not with our children, but just the siblings alone. And we met at our eldest brother's house, Rodney, uh, in order to celebrate life and to celebrate the good times that we shared together. There were eight of us then, and Mel was a part of that. We read from the 90th Psalm, which tells us of our human frailty, of, our, of the brevity of life, and of our mortality. But it also says resoundingly of the eternal nature and the everlasting kingdom of our God. We also reminded each other on two important matters. 
Firstly, that four of us were already past the age of 70. Four of us have passed the age of 60. And so we thought it was a time for celebration and thanksgiving, and that is what we did. And Mel was there leading that chorus. It was a time when we said to each other, you have to mend relationships. You have to deal with those broken situations. And this opportunity afforded us that time to do it. Most of all, we said that we had to ensure that our relationship with God, with our Lord, is intact and in good shape. And Mel, as she was so, always so vocal, was upfront in her speaking and the clarity of her message. She reminded us the fact that we all have a building, but one day we will have a building, a house of God, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And then finally she reminded us that like the patriarch Abraham, she was searching for a city that had foundation, whose builder, whose architect is God. We believe as a family she has found that city. And so some of us today in the Lightborn family, I see this is called the Lightborn Singers. As much as we sing, we couldn't recruit four people to come and sing with us today because we are blown out by this experience and the situation. But we're going to do our best, and if we falter, we ask you to help us out. We're going to sing because Marilyn has now reached that land, Beulah Land. Someday I'll be 
Marilyn Andrea Strawn was a practical, down-to-earth, plain-speaking person who touched the lives of many in a personal way. She was honest in the expression of her thoughts. Once, when I was about to offer a solo in church, feeling a bit nervous, I turned around to her and asked for her full support. Characteristically, she didn't mince her words. She looked at me and advised, do your best. You could do this. Either you go up there and you sing well, or you make yourself shame. <laughs> now you decide what you're going to do. Then, of course, she gave me her prayerful support and commended me afterward. So today, I'll do my best not to make myself shame. When Courtney and Marilyn's sister Jenny informed me that I was to give a tribute, I asked, you mean that as I knew her thing that she told me she never wanted? You see, Marilyn had said on more than one occasion that she didn't want any as I knew her over her when she died because, as she bluntly stated, if you didn't know me in life, you sure wouldn't know me in death. I didn't want to go against her wishes. However, Courtney emphasized to me a tribute, Camille, a tribute, to which I responded that I would be honored to do so. Marilyn was firm and resolute in what she believed. She was an honest, decent lady who was an inspiration to others. She was a wise, trusted, and trustworthy friend who told you what you needed to hear, not what you wanted to hear. She lived a life of love, and as is written in Ephesians chapter four, she always spoke the truth in love. She lived with a clear conscience. Her life centered around God and the things of God. She had strong conviction and beliefs, which she freely shared unapologetically 
wherever she was. She reached out to all, no matter their estate in life. She was a woman of prayer who was sincere, committed, faithful, generous, humble, and modest. Never did she seek recognition for the many things she did. In fact, all that she did was out of the abundance of her heart, and she never regarded it as anything special, but rather her duty. She rejoiced with those who rejoiced and wept with those who wept. She was so compassionate. Marilyn had a firm voice. She was concerned that she was misunderstood because of it. Camille, people say I'm rowdy. Obviously, they don't know me. That's just how I speak. That's the tone of my voice. I would smile and assure her that I knew that, and so did others. If only she knew how much she was respected and loved by so many. Despite her physical limitations and conditions, she pressed on, making no excuses. Nothing kept her from moving, going, doing, even when she was weak or having discomfort. She taught me, by example, what she said to me on several occasions. Do what you can while you can, because you don't know when you won't be able to. Some of us get a mosquito bite and renege on our commitments or find some other trivial reason not to do what we should. Not so with Marilyn. She was intolerant of mediocrity and slothfulness, laziness. She was an encourager. You can do it. You did well. Y'all, sing out. Support, attend, give help somebody, share. These were some of the words she encouraged others with. She never asked anyone to do what she herself didn't or wouldn't. Not trained in theology, not ordained, but Marilyn exemplified what the church and all who profess the name of Christ as Christians are called to be. She ministered in the lives of so many with pure, unadulterated love and a clean heart in which there was no malice. She wasn't a dignitary in the secular definition of the word, but she was certainly highly regarded as a soldier of Christ. Like all humans, she was not perfect, but she believed and shared that God asks our best. She honored that. She did her best to be the best child of God that she could be. It's what she expected of those around her as well. Marilyn lived a full life. She literally lived until she died. She was going, doing, helping, serving until the very end when she gracefully bowed out and in the words of Shakespeare's Hamlet, shuffled off this mortal coil. Bidding this earth farewell, she was truly faithful unto death. May her life inspire, motivate, and make us go and do and be better. Let us live our best life so that we, like her, may create a legacy of our love for God and our fellow men. Marilyn Andrea Strawn, unsung hero, March Angel, has left us. We salute her and thank God for placing her in our lives. Well done, my dear friend and big sister. Well done.
morning church this today is it's one of my most difficult tasks in my life this relationship goes far beyond or before Marilyn and Courtney became husband and wife you see when Courtney was in college he used to call me and Philip Turner to keep watch for Mar of Marilyn for him and so every weekend, I, after Sunday services, I had to report them all as well. Camille talked about Marilyn Rowdy. She, she, was, she was cool in her comments. Silly boy. He stupid, eh? Shut up. And she didn't do that to strangers. She did it to me. She did it to Courtney. But she was the the wind beneath Courtney's wing. She was. And many a times I would say to, to, to her, my name get up. And she would say, you know how you go. You and Craig go mess, you know how you go. And she was dutiful. She was dutiful. The moral and I knew go back when we became members of that young adult group here in church a transformative organization that took breakfast to real breakfast instead of sandwiches. Courtney used to stand and cook in the big pot. Marilyn used to bring her tuna and stuff fixed from home. And when Marilyn died, the thought came to mind how was she to me, and how was she to St. Agnes Church? And the only thing came to mind was hymn 440 of our church hymnal. And I want to read verses 7 and 8. Now that each chair his comrade at heart be has won, while we follow where Christ leads the way, to where there's honor to yield or the battle to shun, we will fight and will watch and will pray. Though the warfare be very, the trial be sore, in the might of a God we shall stand, over joy to be crowned and be pure evermore in the peace of our own fatherland. That was Marilyn. Nothing bothered her. Circumstances were difficult. And she trot along. I was president of young adults and, and even when we moved into the ACW and ACM, Marilyn and I had become friends. Don't worry about the program saying my, my wife was a special friend. We were friends before that. And I, I used to visit her at the downtown express shop and sit with her for hours at a time, just talking generally. I used to go to Marathon, and I never passed without stopping to spend one, two dollars, and chat with Marilyn. So Marilyn was, for me, always a shopkeeper, a humble person, someone who put herself in a position to give service, to serve, to make others happy. She had an awesome ministry here at St. Agnes, awesome. And the reason I, I, I thought of we are soldiers of Christ is because 35 years ago, when Willie Thompson was wrecked to here, and this young bunch of guys and girls thought we were challenging him, he put us to the test. He said, start a tape ministry. And we tell him, bring it on. And from then to two weeks ago, Marilyn continued to tape ministry. And so when I reflected on her, there is no one in this church, sorry if I offend someone, but there is no one in this church whom I see as being a soldier for Christ as Marilyn was, okay? She was a breadwinner. She was a hustler. I go to work five o'clock in the mornings and I will cross Marilyn at Bethel Avenue and then the now the Somilo Highway. Six o'clock in the morning at Gray Van headed to work. 
she was prompt. She was, she was bring Courtney along or she was going to leave him behind, but she was coming on time. That was all. Our relationship cemented even further. Courtney is my son's godfather. Marilyn became my first child's godmother. And then the baby and my baby are inseparable. Inseparable. When they're in town, Friday, Saturday, Sundays, um, they go out. I, I'm, I'm tempted to find out where, where were you all last night or the night before, but I haven't built up the nerve to do that yet. You know? But they hang until 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, and, and sometimes I have to call and say, time to come home. Marilyn was confidential. She was loyal. Courtney could tell you, no one could have said anything about Henry Dane to Marilyn, because she dismissed you right away. Okay? She loved her two daughters. She loved her son. Uh, she loved her husband. And she says to him, well, she was a disciplinarian, and he was, he was a little less than a disciplinarian, so she used, to, she used to put him in all the time. You're cloaking them girls, you're cloaking them girls. I knew it, because I was a part of the family. And if you listen to the strong, say, they, they would say that I'm a brother of a different mother, but I'm their brother. She was the only one, the only one who could get Courtney to move when he's supposed to move. <laughs> and if I didn't get him to go, I called Marilyn and said, man, tell your husband to get it right. And she would say, time to go, you know. Marilyn found time to visit people, to share with people, to give of herself to people. She was sacrificial. She had an outreach far beyond human understanding. Those of us in church who paid attention to Marilyn knew Marilyn was sick. About a month ago, I said to Courtney, man, she deteriorating. I said, why don't you start that woman from driving that car? And he couldn't stop her. She was determined to do what she wanted to do, how she wanted to do, when she wanted to do, and without Courtney's approval. She couldn't, Courtney couldn't tell her to park. I mean, he was successful, I think, in getting her to close up shop in, in Marathon. But she was fearless and determined. She would come to meetings, and if you ain't ready to start, she's starting them. She don't care what you say. You can be mad at her as much as you like. I mean, afterwards, she'd say, all is love. She was a wonderful soul. Camille covered much of what I wanted to say, and so I'm closing. And as I reflect on it, I went to him 3, 439, and I said, stand up for Jesus. And the last verse reads, stand up, stand up for Jesus, to strife will not be long. This day, the noise of battle is the victor song. To him that overcometh, a crown of life shall be. He with the king of glory shall reign eternally. That's where she is. She is reigning eternally. I am satisfied that the life Marilyn live, she's received a good reward. Okay? Courtney, the girls, the extended family behalf of the ACM, the lunch bunch, the Lords, the Friday crew, know that we stand with you. This walk is not an easy one, but we will walk this with you. Be encouraged. May our soul rest in peace. A white GMC car number 8P9937 is blocking traffic and needs to um, move quickly, please.
14 years ago, on August 9th, my sister Deshonda and I were welcomed with open minds, hearts, and hands to the Lightborn and Strawn family. Before we moved there, home was a foreign concept to us. But it became the only home we knew. From the day we entered those double glass doors, the importance of God and his saving power was instilled in us and still continues today. When we were young youth at St. Agnes, our second home, our daily routine would be school, home, church, Friday night youth groups, Saturday 7 a.m. morning mass, breakfast, choir practice, and band to round out the day. On weekends, Ms. Strong would wake us up at the crack of dawn, opening every blind and window, saying, let God's light shine. Don't let the sun beat you up. Today is a beautiful day. Bring your Bibles. Come, let us have a word with God. Many mornings, we found ourselves reading a particular verse over and over until it was read with enthusiasm and correctly. As we got older, and felt it was too early to get up. She started writing daily scriptures out on a piece of paper, leaving them on our bare heads so we can read them when we woke up. This was her way of making sure we kept in touch with God, regardless of if we were tired or not. She wouldn't force us to come together anymore, but she would impress upon us the importance of having a relationship with God. I could hear her saying now, it is God and he alone that can save us from this world of sin. We weren't born in this world forever. Get your life right because the Lord is coming. Even while off to school, she would ask, did you read your forward day by day today? And oftentimes my answer would be no. She would say, Desi, no, you must have a relationship with God because it is him alone that will save you. Worse, if it was a Sunday, she would ask, well, did you go to church today? And if I said no, she would say again, Desi, no, you must have a relationship with God. It is him that will save you. She even spoke to my roommates telling them that they too must have this relationship. Ms. Strawn was a God-faring, hard-working, strong, and independent mommy. She also taught us the value of money. When we worked in the straw market during the summers, selling soda, water, chips, and cookies, while her stall on Marathon was closed. We also worked with our cousin Marvin one Christmas holiday, selling Christmas decorations. Marvin? You still ain't pay us yet? <laughs> we were so excited to make our own money, only for her to take it, but to put it in a savings account. Not until we were of age, we realized why she did what she did. She would say, when you make your own money, don't squander it, save it, because you will need it for later. She just wanted the best in life for me and my sister and by any means necessary, she got her point across. <laughs> if you ever came to the house during the summer months, you would see Ms. John in the spice tree, somewhere in the yard, or in the house picking spice. Yes, the spice you put in your house. Boy, did she love them spice. This was her process, cutting the tree branches with full green spice. Next, she would get a million and one boxes to cut the spice branches off each branch, just leaving the bunch of spice. Next, she would further leave the spice balls in the box alone. Finally, she would place these boxes outside the sun so they can dry up and become the spice you know to put in your sauce. 
This process sounds easy, but it's harder than you think. Especially if you see the amount of spice trees in our yard. Ever since her passing, it has been raining a lot. And every time it rains, I could see her running outside. Oh no, the spice! Come, come! Even though her physical presence is gone, she is with us in spirit. I see her in everything I do and say. I hear her voice when I'm happy, angry, or sad. If she saw us crying right now, she would say, what you crying for? I told you I wasn't going to be here forever. I've gone on to be with my father. See you there. So cry, but not for too long, because she is pain-free, happy to be in her father's mansion. There's a song called, I Pray We'll All Be Ready, and a line says, you can't rely on your mama's prayer when your mama is no longer there. She would always tell us, seek God. He's the only one that will determine our faith. I can't do it for you. I can only provide the tools and the resources, but that's something you must do on your own. So thank you, Ms. John, for the prayers encouragement, and life lessons you taught us. I love you. May you rest in peace. with 
his blood many Sit, please. I wish firstly to take this opportunity to extend uh, to the family of Marilyn our sincerest love, to Courtney and the girls, to the siblings and other members of the extended family. I wish to recognize half of the diocese of the priests, Reverend Smith, Reverend Stewart, Father Hamilton, Canon Sebastian, Father Charles Simmons, who have come all the way from New York. Father Michael White, Reverend Roach, Reverend Dwight Roll, Reverend Father Toppin, Father Smith, Father Bain, Father Nain, who has come in from Andros, Archdeacon Fox, Father Carey, Father Mutri, Deacon Miller, and the almost Deacon Thomas, <laughs> Canon Roll and uh, Bishop Thomas, Bishop Thompson. We are so happy that they have come to be a part of this celebration of one who all of us knew as a child of God. I wish to use for a text the fifth verse of the 117th Psalm. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. The Christian church is gathered in this historic church of St. Agnes to celebrate the life and witness of one who was baptized, confirmed, married, commissioned, and witnessed in this church as a child of God and an inheritor of the kingdom of heaven who has now run the race, finished her course, qualified for heaven and has gone to wear her crown. One may search throughout the scriptures to find something appropriate to cause others to focus on this individual. I have found no other place than going into the Hebrew hymnal 
to give us the description of such a person. That hymnal that Marilyn read every day, every day in her prayer life and daily worship. I would like to emphasize every day and twice on Sunday. And so I have found this text to describe this wonderful person, precious in the sight of the Lord, is the death of his saints. You've heard how well persons from all over spoke of Marilyn. All true. For she was a true Christian witness. We, now we got a lot of faithful people. But she was true witness. Pentecostal? No. Baptist? No. But an Anglican? Yes whose life was an example of goodly and godly living and Christian witness. There was nothing fake about Marilyn. She was most sincere in what she did and genuine. She always spoke from her heart for she knew that what went into her was not important. Rather, what came out of her with a smile. There was nothing to guess about her because her knee communication department was always in operation. Her prayer, genuine. Her conversation, genuine. Her worship, genuine. Her life, Christ-filled. She was honest and true and sincere and always smiling. She did not talk about Jesus, but she lived and demonstrated him in her life. Everywhere she went, she experienced the resurrection of Jesus. So everywhere she went, she told the world, he lives. Look at me. He lives for I serve a risen Savior who is in the world today. I know that he is living whatever man may say. I see his hands of mercy. And I hear his words of cheer. And just the time I need him, he was always here. He lives. She would proclaim. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know. He lives. Ain't nobody told me so. I didn't hear it on the news. I didn't read it in the papers. She would say, he lives within my heart. I wish she becomes a challenge to us all in this church. Bring about, bringing about not a movement, but a revival in our church. During the Stations of the Cross this past year, this past Lent, I asked members of the church that on a Friday evening I would like someone to volunteer to testify. You know, some of us ain't even scared of that word testify. And Marilyn volunteered. And her witness was mind-boggling. She had a walk. 
and a talk with Jesus that made everything right in her life. She was never fussy other than when she's telling me off. She was never noisy other than when she sang. Neither was she busy doing odd things other than doing the will of the Father. Not seeking any reward. Not looking for any announcement or, or recognition. It reminds me of a time somebody gave me $200. I was angry because I didn't put it in the bulletin. She wasn't that kind of person. She was just happy being busy about the place doing the Father's will, not seeking any reward nor recognition, but just contented that God had called her to be the difference in so many lives. And I wish for us to pay attention to the word difference. Because all of us have been called to be different, not indifferent. She lived that difference each day. You see, I believe that Sometime and somewhere in Marilyn's life, she had a personal experience in and on her life. An experience that set her on fire for God. A fire that no one could extinguish. A fire that put joy in her soul that kept her smiling all the time. She had a garden experience that consecrated her life for service. And so every time you saw Marilyn, she had a smile. You know, some of us have been coming in St. Agnes 80 years now and still can't smile. <laughs> Setbacks in her life, yes. Disappointments in her life, yes, but all of them together could not outdo or outshine the joy she experienced in her life from her garden experience. And knowing that they could not measure up to the treasures of God that he has laid up for her where she is going. See, for the garden experience, is a personal experience lived out in our life. You can have all the degrees in the world. You can have all the theological training in the church. But each of us must have that garden experience. She was a member of the choir. From way back from as a higher time. When the choir sat here. In them long blue robes. Every Good Friday, I looked for her to be on time. Because she was the hymn raiser. And somebody came to me and said, Father, it's almost time to time. I say, we ain't starting till Marilyn come. Because she knew all the hymns in the hymn book. And she knew all the tunes and plenty more of the hymn book. And she loved to sing. So every Good Friday I looked to her to raise the hymns. If there were only two members of the choir on Sunday night, One was her. She was faithful in everything she did. She was faithful in the ACW. No problem maker.
Sometimes when the problem started in the back there, she would get on the tune prayer line. That was Marilyn. She was a part of the renewal movements in this church. Within and without the parish. She had her own visitation program going. She never used to wait for the rest of them. She came to the office and she got all the bulletins she needed to give to everybody she was visiting and she would be on her way. She knew where every member of the church lived and had senior members she would take bulletins to and did special and personal blessings for them every week. I know where she got the money from. But it was done. What more can I say? Other than she was a true child of God. Her passing was sudden and shocking. But God's will must be done. But we know and have the assurance that the Lord was a shepherd. We know that she would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of her God than to dwell in the tents of ungodliness. We know how God has blessed her life these many years and she blessed others as she went along. We know that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of a saint. Marilyn has gone to her well-deserved rest where the wicked will cease from troubling her and her weary soul will be at rest. She has gone to worship in the heavenly courts where happy birds sing and fly. She's found a seat in the heavenly choir. Can you hear that alto? <laughs> Some of you are getting sad. <laughs> Can you hear the bells? Now ringing. Can you hear the angels singing, singing glory? Hallelujah. Jubilee. For precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. She has gone to that mansion Jesus has prepared for her. Now, Father Rose, she ain't no room occupant. She's a mansion or occupant. For he has gone to prepare a place for us that where he is, she shall be also gone to, mm, to that mansion she lived and prepared herself for. She did her best without complaint. She was just faithful to God and to God alone until death. Her life is a challenge to us all. We must now live to Meet her again in that number which no man can number. Coming from all directions. From nations and nations and, and nations from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Marilyn will be there. Merle will be there. Ishmael will be there. All God's children. 
will be there. Then there is a voice that comes and says, Who are these? And And whence have they come? The voice said, Oh Lord God, thou knowest. These are they who have come through many tribulations. I asked one of these young scholars what the Bible say. He, he said some toy oil or something like that. I said, Come on, my name. Huh? Or these. Or these. You know, better change that. Because the hell I catch it now, here's more than ordeal. These are they who have come courtly to great tribulations, have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. These sophisticated theologians don't know what that means. Now they stand before the throne and the Lamb, they will hunger no more, neither thirst anymore, no more high blood pressure. No more Sh sugar. No diabetes. We got sugar. <laughs> no more headaches. No more pinching under the fingernail. For she has gone to be with her Lord. Where we are told we shall be changed and in a moment and a twinkling of an eye and the last trump we shall be changed this robe mm, of flesh shall drop and rise to seize the everlasting prize and shout oh hallelujah while passing through the air Farewell. She has gone from this world to that which she labored for. And we thank God for her. Now, now we who are alive and remain must do our best to meet her. Once again, don't mind all these funny preachers who tell you this and tell you that. He said, the Lord shall come. And, do I believe the Lord coming again? The Lord shall descend with the voice and the shout of the archangel and the trump of God. Don't party yet. The party ain't started yet. And the dead in Christ. No, 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 no. Read your Bible. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord, we who are faithful to the end, we who have been influenced by Marilyn's life, will, will not go before, but together we will caught, be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. There was something about Marilyn that kept her going. And we will not understand it until later on. But we here as an Agnes are glad she, she was a part of us. Because she has affected everybody's life. My Marilyn could have robbed you and you ain't no getting robbed, you know. Because that, that contagious smile of an indication of, a, of an indicator of an inner being was demonstrated every day. She says, heaven will surely be worth it all. But don't play around with your salvation. 
She says, be busy on your knees. Because central is never busy. She says, let us make ourselves what we ought to be to the glory of God. So you can smile. So you can smile. All of us ought to be smiling for Marilyn. For the joy she shared as she tarried there. No other. And that's why you can't point the finger at anybody because you don't know what their inner being is with God. Sometimes you see a drunkard carrying down the road and you talk bad with that drunkard, but that drunkard go home and he kneels. Us who come to church every Sunday, just jump in the bed. Marilyn says, live the life. Girls, she did her best with y'all. She taught you how to live at a young age. Now you must take what she has given you and live your life that she could be proud. Oh, Lord, we will miss her. But we are assured that precious in the sight of God is the death of a saint. May she rest in peace. Let us now with confidence and hope confess the faith into which we were baptized as we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. And the name of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church. The communion of saints. The forgiveness of sins. The resurrection of the body. And the life everlasting. Amen. Our sister Marilyn, let us pray to the Lord Christ, who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Marilyn and dry the tears of us who weep. Yes, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Yes, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Raise our sister Marilyn to eternal life. Yes, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister Marilyn to the joys of heaven. Yes, Lord. Our sister Marilyn was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Yes. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Yes. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister Marilyn. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend you our sister Marilyn who was reborn by water and the spirit in holy baptism. 
Grant that death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Here are our words recorded in the first epistle of St. John, chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. He will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in the thought we have been and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that has passed and grant that we may serve you in the midst of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Thank you, God. Friends, as you notice, a collection will be taken, an offering will be taken to continue Marilyn's ministries. Um, that means you need to keep the aisles clear so that the offering could be lifted. So please, when you give the piece, please stay in your pew and hand the piece on to you so that the aisle could be clear. Here now what St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 12. We are the body of Christ. By the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of life eternal. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed and not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and dark angels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. wisdom you brought creation into being. In your great love you fashioned us in your image. In your tender compassion you sent your son Jesus Christ our Savior to share our human nature. In the power of the Holy Spirit he overcame the power of sin and death and brought your people to new birth as first fruits of your new creation. On the night that he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, 
which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of God. Therefore, Father, according to the command of your dearly beloved Son, and we offer you, Father, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Send your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Redeemer. As we partake of this holy food of new and unending life, May your Holy Spirit establish us as a royal priesthood with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Agnes, St. John the Baptist, and all your sons and daughters who share in your eternal inheritance through Jesus Christ our Lord with him and in him and through him by the power of the Holy Spirit. We worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in song of everlasting. body of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. Lamb of God, grant our rest.
communion prayer. Almighty Father, we thank you that in your great love you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, 
but the fullness of joy with all your saints through Jesus Christ. May she rest in peace. Amen.
Let us commend our sister Marilyn to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Deliver your servant Marilyn, O sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil. Set her free from every bond, that she may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God forever and ever. Savior, we commend your servant Marilyn. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sin of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal, grant unto her, O Lord. through the mercy of God, rest in peace.
away. 